little bit loud, I think. Let me lower that volume. I like the music, but let's see. It's a good volume. I may we'll go with that. I think we finished the job for kindly and went shopping. Maybe. No, I feel that we did. So I think we have two more jobs to do. Oh yeah, we got our new samurai buddy, our ghoul samurai buddy. And we talked to um the elders. Well, we we got the elders arrested, the elders of Wampoa. This was an entirely non-combat mission. don't have enough money for Okay, maybe I will go get some rest. So this will, this will probably be a combat one, right? I think we already read all this. Oh, you know, this is a stealthy, sneaky one. Yeah, let's go ahead and take that. And let's go uh, take a nap. Give those grenades to someone else. You wake with a start, your limbs bound up in a sweaty tangle of linen bedsheets. An incredible sorrow swells in your chest. You feel empty, half starved, and alone. Fragmentary memories of a half remembered dream flit through your mind. They're already fading away to nothing. Chase them. You close your eyes and concentrate, willing yourself to keep the dream from slipping away. Gradually, the memory comes back to you. The walled city. You were back in the walled city. You don't remember how you got there, but it couldn't have been any place else. Even the barons weren't so squalid. You remember craning your neck to look above you. The buildings that made up this part of the walled city were new construction, even cheaper than the old. Now their foundations had rotted out from under them, and the buildings leaned into one another like a gang of drunken men. A rain of plaster and asbestos sprinkled down, dusting your shoulders. Now you have mesothelioma. You began to creep forward, picking your way past the piles of refuse and debris, past the pimps and the dumpster fires, the broken glass and the dirty needles. 
The air reeked of rot and sewage and industrial waste, a disgusting melange that caught in your sinuses and crawled down your throat. You gagged on the stink, but it didn't slow you down. In the back of your mind, you knew that you had no reason to be doing this. There was nothing for you in the walled city. You shouldn't have been there, but the rest of you was hungry, unbearably, indescribably hungry. And that part of you knew that if you'd keep moving, you'd finally get to eat. As you forced your way deeper into the walled city, locals stood at their windows and stared. Inexplicably, some of them dropped to their knees. You kept moving. You could see something in the distance, a silhouette, something enormous, at least twice the size of a troll. But delicate, it was beautiful. The huge figure beckoned you, gesturing with slender limb. An explosion of warmth filled your chest, and you knew that if you could reach it, your problems would be over. It, she, would make all of your sorrows disappear. You moved forward at a crawl, but the figure felt impossibly far away. You reached out, calling to her, and... And then you woke up. The empty feeling in your stomach slowly fades, taking the strength and vibrance of the memories along with it. Sure. Do we see Lady D in the distance? A rotund, balding dwarf in a cheap suit turns to face you. Light glints from the heavy gold chains that hang around his neck. When he speaks, the voice that greets your ears is high and nasal, and has been contorted into a rough approximation of a New York accent. Um, sorry, I won't be attempting that. Oh. Pleased to meet you. Cheng was kind enough to arrange this little sit-down between us. You can call me Dr. Shen Yang. Um, pleased to meet you. I'm the plague. His grip is as soft as his palm is moist. It's like shaking hands with a boneless ham. You share a long, uncomfortably flaccid handshake before you f he finally re releases you. Ah, I'm looking for a little outside help on a problem I've been having. Ordinarily, I'd handle it myself or have some of my friends see to it, but it's kind of delicate, you know. My my guys would be noticed before they made any headway on my problem. So I figure, hey, I hire contractors all the time. Might as well get some contractors of a different stripe. Lasting friendships are made through favors exchanged. Interesting. Sure. Well, I run a little film studio, Southern Crown Films. We mostly do trid work, but we recorded some sims too. Maybe you've seen some of my stuff. Space Mongols from the Moon. The Flavor of Pomegranates. Ultimate Kill Squad. No, but I like the sound of the flavor of pomegranates. How much pomegranates are there? A lot. There's one scene where two trolls eat a pomegranate with an elf. And they, well, I don't want to spoil it, but believe me, it's glorious. I'll send a copy over to Cheng so you can take a look. Anyway, there's this other guy in the industry, and we've been buttonheads since day one. Name's Neville Ma. He runs Yellow Spring Studios. No matter what I do, I can't shut him out of the biz. He always manages to get just one over me, steal my stars. He's been running me into the ground with a show called Promises in Moonlight. The star's a girl named Penelope Wong, new talent, but the viewers have been going nuts over her. She's the show's linchpin. So about six months ago, Neville was out in... 
Guangzhou for some hoity-toity party. He's on the road, probably drunk. A semi comes out of nowhere and pow, wrecks his fancy new Eurocar Westwind. Bad luck for Neville, good luck for me. I figure, hey, that's the end of him for the year, and I can start planning some new stuff he can't compete with from inside a hospital. You follow me? Sure, keep going. Problem is, the bastard's back in the game already, and he's bringing out season two of Promises in Moonlight. I need that show off the air, one way or another. And that, my friend, is where you come in. How long did it take him to re recuperate? I tell you, kid, he should have been in that hospital for at least three months, and in physical therapy a lot longer. Only took him a week to get out. Couldn't freaking believe it. That kind of medical care costs top dollar. He's got a lot of money, but not that much. Recovery time like that means one of two things is going on. Neville could have found himself a silent partner, someone willing to pay top dollar for cutting edge care. I don't think it's likely, but it could have happened. If it ain't that, the smart money says he's been skimming off the top of Yellow Springs earnings and not reporting it to the other shareholders. Oh, okay, so we need to find evidence, right? I need you to go get me something to blackmail Neville with. Find out how he could afford to get out of the hospital so fast. He works out of his penthouse most days, so search his computer, his closet, sock drawer, whatever. There's got to be something incriminating in there. Where? Neville lives in the Repulse Bay. It's this real swanky joint in the south end of Hong Kong Island. By the bay with the same name. I haven't been able to get anybody to poke in around his apartment because the security is too tight. Lucky for you, though, Neville's throwing a party on the mezzanine level with all the shops and a restaurant and balcony and such. He's celebrating the second season launch of his show, and everybody's gonna be there. Gonna make a real snarl for the building security. You might also want to hit up the party if you can bluff your way in. Everyone close to Neville will be there, and most of them will be three sheets to the wind by the time you get there. Some discreet questioning might get me the dirt that I need. Just remember... If you go to the party, don't use your real name. Go with Argyle. Should be safe enough. There's nobody in the biz out there with that name. So nobody will ask any questions about how your work's going. My guess is that they're at, this is going to end up being hilariously wrong. Couldn't you just make a better show? I mean, it doesn't even sound all that underhanded. If he is skimming money and we can blackmail that, like, he's doing something that's not, not cool. And so that he deserves it. Like, we aren't going in there to, uh, kill him or kill Penelope Wong or something else to sabotage the show. Just giving him his due. Oh yeah, Cheng talked you up when I approached her with the job. Given what she told me, this job should be cake. Now the blackmail material is what I need more than anything. But if you can get Penelope Wong out of her contract, I'll pay you extra, got it? I want that star power on my side. And one last thing, I don't want you starting a scene while you're there. You interrupt his party, make a mess or trash his apartment, and I'm not paying you. We clear on that? Good. I can't have Mon knowing I'm after him. In my business, everybody's got dirty tricks. But if you make it public you're using them, that's it. My career's as dead as the People's Republic of China. Nobody will work for me or with, with me ever again. So don't embarrass me, eh? Discreet. That's what I like to hear. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. You can get paid, and I'll put the word out there you're a solid hire. Sweet. Good, woman. That's what I like to hear. When you're done, drop Chang a line. I'll come meet you back here, and I'll hand over the money. Woman. Okay, so...
Honestly, that sounds more fun than the other one, but I'm wondering if I'm going to not be very good at this because my charisma is just not super high. Maybe I should do the other jobs just to hopefully get enough karma points to upgrade, to unlock another etiquette. What kids do I even know already? It's corporate and security. Is there an etiquette that would help with? So socialite, there's a socialite etiquette, isn't there? That's what we need, probably. Okay, I won't upgrade my drones for the time being. Let's go to the Emperor's Tomb, get some money, get some karma. Uh, let's go chill out in the club for a moment though first. Sorry, I can just hear the, the music, it's pretty, pretty bopping. Although again, nobody in here looks like they're having any fun. This is the worst club ever. Like it's trashed and dirty. Everybody's bored just standing there. There's one person dancing who is... I don't know, is she the DJ? Just find this weird funky setup. some chiasm in there. Oh, that makes me want to play Vampire the Masquerade again. Um, yeah, let's sneak into this museum. like a subway announcer. Now oh, yeah, we could bring X-Flow, the physical magician we talked to. Oh, let's not bring that guy. What, what can he even do? Besides smack stuff. Infected skull. Okay, this, this counts as equipped cyberware. Ghoul leg. Type leg. Interesting. I don't think he's going to be super stealthy. Spring Cobbit. We'll take the ghoul for um, more combat things. job is a golden opportunity in more ways than one. A raid of the in-development museum, the Emperor's Tomb. The museum's claim to fame is its location. It rests on top of ancient catacombs, where an excavation is underway to convert them into the museum proper. Intel has it that the workers are dying, not from on-site accidents, but from magical disturbances in the area. Despite the hazards, development continues. Your client, Mr. Drake, contacted you to retrieve two tomes, probably ancient, magical, priceless. 
but it won't be a smash in the park. You have to get to the tomes before they're catalogued, where they'll afterward be near impossible to access. As you near the museum, its height and grandeur looms unsettlingly over you. Even unfinished, it's reached an imposing size. At least that means there's plenty of room for pricey antiques. The best part? Mr. Drake needs you to make this run look unprofessional. Shard glass and looting it. Oh, so was I totally misremembering? I thought this was the one that he wants to, like, sneak in and not kill people. And I guess that still sounds like we aren't going to be killing people, but... I guess we will be fighting. We'll be fighting magical creatures? Or some sort of cursed mummies? I don't know. Um, here, God, but you have one of these. Just one. Yeah, maybe we should have brought the ghoul instead of Duncan. Oh, wow. Well. Entry worked just like Drake said. You creep into the dark, unfinished sight. Good, now I'll be appraising what you, see, what you see as you go through this floor. Grab the best stuff, and my alarm suppression should keep you afloat. Just don't get too ballsy. If the books haven't been cataloged yet, they'll still be in the basement, the tomb. I'll be in touch. Okay, so he's suppressing the alarm. So we're being a little bit stealthy. Maybe that's what I was thinking about. The earpiece clicks off. Call disconnected. He didn't even stay on the line long enough for you to get a word in. Your team powers up the nearby generator. Work lights along the new marble flooring sleepily flicker to life. Everyone surveys the site. You know, I've always wanted to do something like this. What do you mean? These artifacts, they've all been stolen from the earth. So now we get to teach a lesson to the man who's excavating it, that these were never truly his. <clears throat> all right, but we're thieves ourselves. We're stealing things from one man only to give them to another man. These artifacts don't belong to him either. Oh, he'll get what he deserves too. Objects like these are too bright to remain in some vault or display case. More thieves will be drawn to them, like moths to a diode. I'm just excited to be a part of the cycle. Find both ancient books. Steal many new yen worth of artifacts. Do not trip alarm. Okay, I can do some of that. Let's go in here first. Dragon scales, mummified head. Oh, a replica Utah, Utah raptor skull. I want that more than anything else. But it's so cheap. Okay, we'll come back in here. I'm guessing there's only like a certain number of items we can safely take. And so we want the most bang for our buck. Maybe I'll take anything that's more than a thousand. Oh, alarm threshold over ten. So maybe we can take ten things? That seems... Hmm. Well, let's, let's just see. We'll take the dragon skills. Grand opening. Oh, we can't go upstairs.
This bookshelf is made from your standard stained wood. It's filled with books by famous poets, both English and Chinese. You find several books that aren't organized properly, and they don't appear to be poetry. Removing the books and thumbing through them reveals nothing else unusual. Interesting. Hmm. It's a painting with a plaque beneath it. It reads the Lady of Shalot. Shalot? 1888. I guess, is that a real painting? Welcome to Laozhang. Please input your password to log in. Oh, I can bypass this myself. This section of the OS has a security hole that lets you bypass the password without cracking it by spoofing the user, the user credentials. Sure. Me files. Business related files fill the sub menu, most of them about contracts, construction plans, and financial projections. Among the files are several saved emails. Three of the most recent stand out. Cho, per our previous discussion, I've attached this email the revised museum blueprints. The prints outline various changes to the structure and building materials that need to be implemented as soon as possible. Some backtracking may be necessary, but it will cut supply and building costs by over 13% without compromising the museum's size and grandeur. I know you're against it, but production output will have to increase in order to meet our end-of-year unveiling. I'll leave it up to you to figure out the details. But if I find out that you and your team are slacking off again, more cuts will be made. That's the loss of your worker, Mr. Fay. I offer you my condolences. However, we both know construction is dangerous work, and accidents are commonplace. You can look at this as an opportunity to hire someone more competent and who won't get himself killed. What an asshole. I processed your information request yesterday morning. Given a persuasive pittance, the Fay family agreed to forego public retribution regarding the loss of Mr. Kian Fay. Mr. Fay is the fourth laborer lost to hazardous working conditions. Public image is very important to the cooperation. To the cooperation. And it's unlikely another transgression will go unnoticed. As your lawyer, I must advise you to double down on your construction safety protocols, or to seek an alternative to monetary bribes. Money will buy silence in the short term, but we ultimately want a more permanent solution. I'll forward you the contract information of a Gongxian funded organization that can assist you with such matters. Okay. Dear Mr. Ping, I can assure you that the recent rumors regarding construction infractions, worker fatalities, and malpractice are all untrue. Complete fiction invented by the local gossip circuits to stir up trouble for hard-working men like myself. I've taken every possible precaution with this museum, and have spared no expense. Should you need proof, I'll send you my lawyer's contact information. I promise you'll find no infractions filed against me or Gongxian Enterprises. Your investment is sound. Okay. Room controls. Restricted access. Mmm, that sounds like what I want. Ah. Uh, darn. Wait, this is business casual? Okay. I'm down. Oh. This place is still under construction. The local Matrix network probably hasn't been hooked up yet. So is this going to be something to do with the password? Maybe a lot. Maybe, maybe just 1888. Uh, that'd be really crap password. Hmm. 
Or don't set the alarm if I fail this. Okay, what were the names of those books? There were two weird books. But you didn't tell me what they were, dude. I mean, is this whole thing going to have to type in? Let's try it. Downstairs, of course. It's where the spooky stuff happens. Oh, I wonder if we can power it on somewhere then. Okay, let's go and save. Go down. What is this? Do not enter. Well, you know, I plan on doing entering. Okay, so this is a combat room. And I hear like whispering. There's not more stuff to steal though. What's that? Blood. Hope this is not Chris's blood. Okay, we have one ancient book. For sure. Hopefully we'll be able to steal more stuff when we go back up. are going to definitely like, come alive, aren't they? Come to life. Um, why do I have this? That means there's something to fight in there. Isabel, get in here. The Matrix help slide will give you a rundown of some of the features you'll encounter navigating through cyberspace, including system trace, matrix on that, and watch your eyes. Whoa, okay, this is way upgraded compared to the other game. Oh, I float? 
when I move? Oh, this is way cooler. This will be tricky. No, 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 no. That's fine. Damn it. They're just moving too quick. Okay, if we stay along these very edges, it didn't look like you could see all the way up here to this edge, right? Um... System trace is already all almost entirely up. Crap, we have to do something. How do I lower that trace? Can I? Crap. I think we've really screwed this up. Take out this one when it walks over. Whoa, what? Okay, blocker ice. Okay, I didn't realize those were ice. Okay. 
luckily they weren't very strong. I like how they move like squids or something. Ouch. 87% chance it's that. How'd I miss that? back here where we can barely hit it, but this doesn't seem to be able to attack us from here. So we have a data store. Let's go get that. Increase the target's hit chance. <coughs> I can't give it to God. It. Take this guy up from here. That's fun, that's fun. That was just some pay data. So we didn't even need to be in here. Can I just jack out whatever? Okay. Okay, I can't get back here. Oh, what? Gargoyles. And lots of dead bodies. Can't believe I didn't see that earlier. <laughs> the other book in there? A mummy and a gargoyle. I think we have the jump on them, so. You should haste my boy Donkey. Oh, hey, Kuma. Going pretty great. I expect uh, you hear this early. But welcome. Sneaking up on some gargoyles and mummies right now. Beanbag shot. Have a beanbag shot. Um, 
Go for the gargoyle. I'm cool, no problem. That's some funky music. Plague, you hide in this corner. with this no. flush target it's looking used to these like new abilities that we didn't have last game oh no what are you this is another another mummy wait what just happened Where'd Duncan go? The fuck? I'm in like the shadow realm? Preternatural corpse. It's banished me to the shadow realm. Okay, luckily these guys are immune to fart gas. What? So once we have to watch out for the preternatural corpses. Like this guy, this guy will teleport us. I'm so tempted to just go pick that up. But protect yourself. Okay. Game shot. Pierce up to two armor. Let's do it. Oh, nice. have, I think, both entry buffs now. Why would you use that on the drone? Oh jeez, how many of them are there? Do we need to run? We have the buffs. Right? Wasn't that ticked off. Job it, summon. A spirit of avalanche. It's a smash. Oh no, don't banish it.
take that. Oh, dude, you're awesome. Okay, this big rock boy is great. Got the books, great. Next, you need to head upstairs so I can wipe the security data, then you're home free. Uh, did you know those creatures were there? A happy accident. Yeah, I'll keep my eyes open. You do that. Now, time's wasting. Security rooms at the top of the stairs leading back to the museum floor. It wasn't powered on last we looked at it, but. A cadaverous husk materializes in front of you, unfolding like a flower from nothingness into being. It stands with a surprisingly upright posture, and you can see that its robes were once fine quality. It raises a hand to block your path. Stop. It seems you can move freely through this realm, coming and going, taking what is not yours. Who are you? I was an assistant to a great man, an emperor. I was meant to continue assisting him in the afterlife. But something has been unsettled. Bonds were broken. He is no longer here, and I wish to search for him elsewhere. I want out of this tomb. I must free myself from this place. But I cannot leave. My soul is bound within these catacombs, chained to the bones of a life that I no longer possess. Can I help? You can. Slowly, painfully, the mummy inclines its head. It reaches into the folds of its robes and produces a ring of fired porcelain. The creature extends its arm, presenting the object as an offering. Take this talisman and place it among the other artifacts you have removed. Once you have moved it beyond the binding threshold of this excavation, I will be free. Sure. Thank you. I will be forever in your debt. Yeah, I'm fine helping the mummy. Why wouldn't we help the mummy? Yeah, security room's up there. Let's steal some more stuff, though. Uh, 900? Sure. So definitely going to hit the 5,000. Let's go to the other room. Oh, 800. 800. We might want to take that too. I don't think we can get to the next, um... Milestone. There just isn't enough stuff to steal. Even if I took literally everything, I don't think. I think that's good enough. was able to wipe us. I'm 
This is the one. Flip the switch on the bottom right, and then plug in my data chip. The script will doctor the security log so we can sneak you out. It's executing now. And done. Get out of there. Oh, I'm sure to get 10,000 I would have needed to uh, open this guy's vault bookshelf or whatever. That's disappointing. If we are making it look like common criminals, though, they. Whoa, what? It didn't work. Go up. <sighs> Thought we're through the worst of it. Yeah, I did too. So we have three policemen. <clears throat> oh, and Gob is nearly dead. That's no good. Isabel, he'll gob it. Isabel, he'll um, dunk. Me hide. I should have gone Overwatch with the little drone. So can you cast a stall? to most of these fellas. capture this guy. Subdue. Yeah, 
These are police officers. I don't think Duncan would want us killing them. I know it's gonna be really annoying though if we keep that. Isabel, you run here. <laughs> I just have to hope they don't kill Duncan. Punch this guy. Okay, we can't subdue him this turn. We'll subdue him next turn. Drones, you guys got a tank so this guy doesn't come and kill Duncan. on a cooldown. How long is this guy going to be asleep? Let's punch him again. Sure. Feels excessive, but... A little different. Whoa. Okay, we're good. someone else do anything that stuns people? Thank you. 
repair yourself. Anyone do anything that stuns us, dude? No. Oh, who has that grenade? I hope that doesn't hit Duncan. Well, it did. Crap. Subdue! Yes, we are non-lethally taking down these please. Jeez. How about we take this guy out without killing him accidentally, though? He's so low health. Okay, this does no real damage, so we have to use the beanbag. We'll do that next turn. I'm going to need you on hand to heal Duncan, probably. Oh, fuck. I'm going to take damage so I can't heal him. I can't haste him? There we go. Wait a turn, I'll beanbag him. And then the next turn I can subdue him. Bags, my dude. Search bodies for a key fob. Change of plan. Search those bodies for a key fob. You'll need it to access the side door. What side door? In the lobby. My program didn't work as well as I'd expected. I've been monitoring the exits on my cameras, and the HKPF have the front door locked down. Since you can't go out the front now, you've got to exit through the side. That key will get you through the locked side door, which will take you at the east service exit. Well, it's right here. No, get, come get the freaking key. Why does he look like he's... Oh, I guess he is still there. He's just on the floor. Yeah, all three of them are just collapsed on the floor. Oh no. Really? Seems like they have the side door locked down too. We need to be healed. Um, yeah, Duncan needs healed badly. He's really the only one. Duncan, use, use this on yourself, please. How do you do that? Activate. I'm talking. Temper. Sniper enforcer and guard. <coughs> Sure. 
Let's get set up. Excuse me. Small Doberman is in. I feel like we have to take out the sniper. Okay, we're getting in a precarious position, but let's do it. Really? Why are y'all going for Gobbit? They're ignoring Duncan. Big mistake. So, Dunk, you have to beanbag this fella. And stand behind him. Ready to do. Let's get an aim shot. I don't want to injure them too badly. I'm trying to take them out alive, so. Do him, please. Okay, so three rounds before I can subdue again. I'm just gonna punch this guy. Oh, I missed. attacks. Okay. Shotgun boy. It's a dude. just yet. Next turn though we can beanbag and subdue same turn as long as we're close enough. Duncan. 
Oh my god. Okay, shotgun dude, you suck. Not enough AP? What do you mean? Oh, my haste wore off, that's why. Got Gobbit out of there. Gobbit's probably going to be slain. Uh, maybe we can bully this guy by just being like right next to him. And... <coughs> uh. Well, they get him to move and not attack Gobbit, so. Pinball wizard achievement. Okay, we have to wait till next turn to beanbag, and the turn after that we'll be able to subdue. Yeah, let's just keep moving right next to him so he has to move away. this round. Then we're gonna walk up to him. And now we're going for the subdue. There we go. No murdering. We murdered some mummies and stuff, but that doesn't count. Your adrenaline wanes as you fly through the subway tunnels on your way back to Hyoi. There isn't much left to do but pick the shards of glass off your clothes and congratulate yourself on one hell of a run. It's just too bad you couldn't keep the looted antiques. By the end, you'd managed to steal over 5,000 million worth of items for your client, a number that will hopefully be reflected in your mission pay. The damage you caused will likely set the museum's development back even further. Not enough to cripple the project, just enough to send a message. But at the end of the day, you still managed to break a lot of exhibits, displays, and even faces of a few tomb crawlers. The presence of which you had, uh, the presence of which had conveniently slipped to Drake's mind. Surprises aside, you came out on top, and thanks to some quick thinking on Drake's part, you got the books and you got out. Sweet. We have the caramel. Let's get some socialite. <coughs> socialite. I think that's what we'll need. So. Um, class A drones. Heck yeah. Why did I click that again? Okay, let's get payment and then see if we can buy some new drones. Maybe in class A drones. Glaring orc. Wait, who are you? A diminutive female orc res regards you with a sharp, challenging look. The fierceness of her expression contrasts starkly with her sweet, rounded face and neat bob. She flexes her cyber fists. 
Why are you staring like that? Didn't anybody teach you manners? Sorry. It's alright, I can tell you're a newcomer. I just feel a little protective for my part of town. I'm Rosario Ignacio. Or, or the members of my community, Cherry Pink. I specialize in transport missions and nanny services, and I occasionally shadow run for walking around money. I can also fry up a mean batch of... Lum lumpia? Lumpia? I don't know. But you can't have any, any unless I like you. Uh, a nanny. Now what is that, please? Filipino spring rolls, crispy and delicious and full of pork. Or whatever pork flavored substitutes on sale. It's important to be frugal. It has suddenly become very important to me that you like me. Hmm, then you must earn it. Everybody wants to be on my friend because everybody wants my lumpia. Only a handful deserve it. Uh, you said you're a nanny? Look around you. See these shadow runners and dealers of contraband and Johnsons? There's a fair number of kids. And though they wouldn't shout it though they wouldn't shout it from the rooftops. It's usually too dangerous to keep family close. That's where I come in. Shadow nannies. No more bring my baby into combat situations. I've shuttled kids in and out of war zones. I've gone to hiding with little ones for months on end while their parents had to lie low. I've taught children good manners, hygiene, and the proper use of firearms for over 20 years. Teach kids to do them hygiene. <laughs> you never ever had a good nanny. I can see it in your eyes. I can smell it too. I smell as fresh as a pine forest. Hm. I usually nanny children, but you're a prime candidate for some remedial lessons in cleanliness. No offense. The lessons come with Lumpia. <coughs> I just want to make friendly conversation. When people only ever want Lumpia, it's shameful. No, you cannot have Lumpia. You may only desire it from afar. Yeah, why can't you go back to the Philippines? The Japanese Imperial State happened. Supposedly, they've been in charge there for decades. I was just a little girl when they sent their Imperial Marines in. They destroyed my old neighborhood. I don't remember the events, but I still dream of fire to this day. How'd you get out? Half my family fled to the mountains. The other half left the country and eventually scattered all over the globe. I didn't grow up close to anyone but my parents, who are now gone. Any chance of uh, getting in touch with them? The country's caught up in a struggle between the Japanese and Hook resistance. Nationalists and neo anarchists backed by the dragon Masaru. I couldn't just waltz in and look for family. Besides, they could be barricaded in caves, avoiding JIS forces for all I know. Yeah, you seem pretty resigned. Filipinos are resilient people. I think the hook will triumph eventually. And if I've got a Filipino community around me, I'm good. Thanks for talking about it anyway. Not many people care enough to bother. How do you get your cyberware? There's always been a large community of Filipinos in the shadows. I reached out and they all pitched in to set me up as a shadow runner. Now, whenever I land a good dig, I give most of my earnings away, giving back to the community. Why do you give away your money? It's not like paying a debt. Yeah, there's always someone asking for a handout. Yet one day, it might be me in need. 
Who knows where my luck will turn, but I know my community will have my back. Cherry Pink does seem like an odd twist for a street name. It's a bona fide Filipino nickname. Unless you want a mouthful of fists, you'll show it some respect. How do you go from babysitting to run in the shadows? <laughs> well, I used to take care of the children uh, of a whooshing bigwig up in the peak. Turned out she was siphoning corporate funds to support both a gambling addiction and an extravagant lifestyle. She got sloppy, and I stumbled across some pretty damning documents as I was tidying the house. I couldn't unsee them, much as I wished it, and I started to fear for my life. She was growing desperate, erratic, so I ran. You didn't run too far. I couldn't go back to Manila because of those JIS scumbags. There's always been a large community of Filipinos in the shadows. I sought them out. We need to become friends with this person to eat her delicious Filipino spring rolls. Oh, can I level up people more? Oh, heck yeah. The Red Samurai. I mean, this ghoul spit seems way more effective, but let's go with Red Samurai. Mercy kill. Oh yes, reduced cooldown on Subdue. We could have used that last, last round. Yeah, we want her to just become really good at hacking. <laughs> Steal spirit or destroy spirit? Destroy spirits from territorial. Nice. Where do I do that again? View notes. Oh, check in box. No, not check in box. Jobs. Claim payment. Oh, what a piddly little sum. Well done. I've attached the payment you're owed. I trust you'll keep quiet about what exactly was liberated from Lou's little museum. I'll come collect the books from Kindly Chen shortly. Sweet. We still need to do um, this party mission now. Oh. Little birds have been whispering in my ear about an urgent and high paying run. Steel Arm Lou, a red pole, managed to get his hands on information concerning a prototype laser weapon in development by Ares Asia Holdings. For years, the Yellow Lotus and the Red Dragon have been locked in a cold war. Despite this, we remain evenly matched. Neither one of us can attack the other without being exposed to devastating reprisals. Lu wants to change this, and he has a plan. Rather than strike directly, 
Lu intends to aim external forces at the Red Dragon, specifically Knight Arant. He intends to frame a white paper fan named Golden Fong, making it appear that the Red Dragon have been bribing Ares researchers for classified data. Two leading drone and energy weapons researchers have recently transferred from London to Hong Kong and are running the project. Doctors Taylor and Hardingham were respected in Europe, but in Hong Kong they remain unknown quantities. They're untrusted and therefore are considered untrustworthy. Perfect targets, in other words. We will provide data that will make it look as if the researchers were contacted by Golden Fong and made quite a bit of money, but grew tired of the arrangement. Transfer the attached files to a data chip. The files are bundled with a worm program, which will auto-execute when inserted into the appropriate systems. You need not bring a Decker, though one may be helpful. You will need to plant data in the visitor record system. The camera systems in Hardingham and Taylor's lab. Financial data is to be transferred to Dr. Taylor's personal terminal. That in and of itself will not be enough to ensure Knight Arant involvement. <coughs> Knight Arant? Arant, not Arant. I don't know why I keep saying that. Planting the data is only the first part of your task, and this is where a heavier touch will be required. You will also need to steal the prototype laser weapon. There's a GPS tracking device attached to it, which Lou will plant deep in Red Dragon territory. The apparent theft of a prototype weapon by a disgruntled triad member should convince Arius to dispatch overwhelming force against the Red Dragon, dealing them a vicious blow. As a note, Lou does not care what becomes of the laser weapon. If you wish to sell it or keep it, feel free. I have also attached a map of your extraction route from the building. During the facility's expansion in 2052, Ares Asia was forced to extend their foundations deeper into the island. They drove piles through the former site of the central MTR station, which partially collapsed during the Dalu Bay earthquake of 2044. Practically, this means that you can exit through the basement directly into the new MTR line through Central. Without, with any look, luck, you can be gone without anyone knowing how. Unfortunately, this route is heavily alarmed, so you will be forced to go in the front door. If you can con the front desk, you should have no problems. The facility is both an office and a residence, so strange people coming and going at odd hours is not unusual. If you're not up to... Fast talk, however, be prepared to shoot your way in. Lou does not care if you're loud or quiet, but a word of caution. He came by all this information via the loose lips of one of the research team. Other fixers know of this job. Move fast, and you're guaranteed success. But there are definitely other Shadowrunners with an eye on your prize. <coughs> cool, we'll do that run. Regards and bids you good fortune and plentiful ammunition. It's this restaurant job. One of the things I've learned over the years is that even the rich and powerful have annoyances, thorns in their side, if you will. No one's without troubles. The rich just have different ways of solving them. The client for this run has grown tired of one particular thorn in his side. Chung Sing Rooster Lo. Lo is a red pole for one of the smaller triads here in Hong Kong. The 289s, or the Easy Money Gang, if you prefer. Despite the 289's small stature, Lo's illegal activities have managed to damage the client's profits. Mr. Johnson would like you to help him show Lo the error of his ways. Lo takes an evening every few months to dine at the Shangri-La restaurant in Aberdeen. If you aren't aware, the Shangri-La is an elite establishment serving primarily corporate clientele from Wuxing. Because of this, it's not unusual for diners to bring bodyguards or assistants with them. In Lowe's case, he brings a particularly brutish enforcer known as the Talon, who undoubtedly feels well protected. You are going to prove just how wrong he is in, in this regard. You are to kidnap Rooster Lowe. So long as he is alive and in relatively good health, all options are on the table. While keeping the run quiet would make things easier for Mr. Johnson, no one will shed too many tears over a few dead triad thugs. The client has arranged an exit via boat. So long as you can get low from the interior to the restaurant's dock, the client will handle everything else. 
despite being a Red Bull, Led Lowe is a tactician, not a fighter. Don't expect him to put up much of a fight. The Talon, on the other hand, is as nasty as they come. Be careful about how you confront him, or things may be may go very badly. So okay. Jobs, active jobs. So we have this party and we have an urgent task. Uh if it is urgent, maybe like we need to do it now? I don't know. Maybe it's not that urgent. I'm just gonna keep exploring this guy's bedroom. Whoa! Oh, Gaichu stays here. Okay, I didn't realize that. The storage room that functions as Gaichu's cabin is a cramped, overheated mess. Piles of old ship parts, sheer space with tarnished cookware, flats of instant noodles, a collection of cast off clothes, and reams of di diagnostic manuals for obsolete computer hardware. To top it all off, there's barely any light whatsoever. All of the bulbs in this room are missing. Gaichu is busily moving boxes around, apparently in an effort to carve out some personal space amid the junk he shares his cabin with. As you enter, he cocks his head and turns around. Welcome to my sanctuary, the plague. I apologize for the lack of light, but as I did not need it, Gobbit took the bulbs for use elsewhere. How can I be of assistance? What do you think of our, our home? I'm shocked it has not sunk and drowned us all, to be perfectly honest. But it is as much of a home as anywhere else. I have stayed in Hong Kong. And I'm certain fewer people will stumble upon me and try and kill me. For now, it will suffice. Let's talk about your ghoulishness. As you wish, you are my benefactor, and as such I yield to you. Ask then, I will do my best to answer. It seems like you're stable. For now, I am. I will not suddenly become a ravenous beast lurking in the hold of your ship. At least no more so than I already am. <laughs> That is pretty distinctive armor. That is correct. It is the armor worn by the elite soldiers of the Renraku corporate military, the Red Samurai. Those are the Renraku special forces, aren't they? Correct. The most elite soldiers that the corporation can muster, trained to the highest and most exacting level possible. They are assigned only to the most dangerous, difficult, and important missions. Things other units would balk at even discussing. Yeah, aren't they gonna come looking for it? <laughs> of course they are, but not for the reasons that you assume. What do you mean? I mean to say they will come looking for me because I was bound by duty to commit seppuku rather than flee. Obviously, I have failed in my duty, and that is a grave insult and embarrassment to the team. You were a red samurai? Indeed, for the entirety of my adult life, I was a member of the Runraku military, specifically the Red Samurai. That changed relatively recently. I feel the reasons are abundantly clear. Hence, I still possess my armor, my sword, my training. They have served me well in both my previous life and in this one. Okay. How'd you pick the name Gaichu? It was given to me. This is what the Japanese call ghouls for the most part. I am vermin, a thing shunned by polite society, to be hunted and slain for a bounty. My old life is gone. It seemed as apt a name for the streets as any other I could choose. Yeah, I like that attitude. One does not defeat the enemy solely by strength of arms. One must turn one's own weakness into strengths. It is an old and valuable lesson, too often forgotten. 
How do you end up running the shadows? What other employment is appropriate for a cannibal whose only previous experience is in military operations? There are not many things I know how to do. This is one of them. Yeah, maybe Ronraku could help? In theory, Red Samurai who are wounded are given the best in medical treatment and cybernetics. If these are insufficient to return them to active duty, they are given a pension and retired. In practice, this is never the case. Red Samurai teams do everything together. Eat, sleep, train, play. We learn to think for each other, move as a single entity. When one part of that team is broken, it affects everyone. The other members of the unit would be distracted, thinking about a wounded comrade, and would resent a new member for usurping the old member's place. So the wounded invariably take the same course of action, for the good of the team. Ritual suicide. Seppuku. Interesting. Perhaps in the UCS or other western county counties? Countries, surely. It would not be necessary, but for us the laws of etiquette are different. Some call it extreme, but it is always done willingly. Or almost always, I should say. In my case, I became infected while on a sabotage mission against Shiwase in Osaka. The unit was exfiltrating on foot from Nanawa Ward through the Arinchiku slums. We had not anticipated a ghoul nest on our route. My surprise got the better of me, and I was bitten. Understand that since the passage of the Yamato Act, Japanese is a pure country, metahumans are deported, and to be infected with HMHVV is to be less than an animal. You will be killed on sight. Since this was, in effect, the same as being permanently crippled in the eyes of my team, it was expected I would kill myself. Why didn't you? Hmm, because I am still capable of fighting. I questioned the necessity of suicide. Why should I die if I was still as effective as before? Was I not worth having simply because my diet changed? One does not discard a quality tool simply because the surface is stained. I made the decision to leave while the unit was allowing me time to prepare for my expected suicide. I took nothing but my weapons, armor, and a small number of personal mementos. I knew the unit would hunt me down and kill me. Ghouls are considered vermin in Japan. To have a red samurai become one and refuse to die? Unconsciousable. Yeah, you guys take honor very seriously. They do, to an anachronistic degree. Political and ideological indoctrination is as much a part of the training as physical fitness and weapons practice. In order to use this, they make certain you will only turn it on enemies of the court company and the nation. They found me two weeks after I ran. I was careless as I fled south, and they caught up with me in Fukuoka. But I escaped, barely. It was at that point I decided I should leave Japan. I knew they would not stop hunting me, but I could make it more difficult for them. How'd you end up in Hong Kong, then? I was searching for a cure. I needed a place where I could disappear into the shadows, find work, and evade capture if a cure did not materialize. The Yamato Act meant that it was even more dangerous to be in Japan than anywhere else. I went to China, primarily because I still hoped to be able to return home. It felt less final if I fled somewhere nearby. I went first to Shanghai, but Renraku's presence there is significantly more robust than in Hong Kong. I learned that my previous unit had not stopped hunting me after I left Japan, so I decided to move further afield. Hence Hong Kong. Where else can anyone arrive and disappear without the city caring one whit? <laughs> Berlin. Yeah, Seattle. 
If Red Raku were not building that towering arcology to dominate the skyline, I would agree with you. Since it clearly has that kind of influence in the city, it seemed unwise to make my residence there. Besides, I have always liked Hong Kong. It has more character than the UCS. Since arriving here, I have drifted between neighborhoods, selling my services to those who are unafraid of my appearance and condition. It has not been as profitable as I had hoped. See you later, man. He's actually quite pleasant to talk to. Oh, let's look at his mementos. Gaichu's box of personal effects is overflowing with a collection of souvenirs, mementos, and knickknacks. There's no rhyme or reason to the collection of items. They appear to have been thrown in haphazardly. Lying atop the box are a collection of antique Japanese coins inside an overturned wooden mask and a black lacquered box with gold inlay. Ah, oh, I've seen... I see you have found my box of personal effects. Please, feel free to examine whatever you like. Just take care to put them back when you're done. I do not own much, but the things I keep are very precious to me. They're all that remains of my former life. Look at the mask. The wooden mask is extremely light. It's been painted a pale white, and the surface is almost as smooth as porcelain, although it lacks the sheen of lacquer. The face's traits are delicate, almost feminine, and featured lifted eyebrows, bright red lips, and delicately carved teeth. Ugh, carved teeth. The teeth have been stained a deep black, barely visible past the slightly parted lips. The expression, while kindly, is ambiguous and uncanny. Viewed from above, the expression is one of calm contentment. Shifting the mask to view it at an upward angle caused the expression to seem melancholy, almost pained. Yo, what's up with this mask? It is a mask from the historical no play, Ikuta Atsumori. The face is that of a young samurai, Taira no Atsumori. I had a collection of a dozen or so no masks when I was younger. That is the last remaining one and my personal favorite. Yeah, what's the difference between a normal play and no? Or what's the play about, maybe? Hmm. Why is it your favorite? How about that? A measure of civic pride, I suppose. And I like the story. Taira no Atsumori died at the Battle of Ichinotani, just outside Kobe. The play takes place primarily at Ikuta Shrine, which is located in downtown Kobe. In old cities in Japan, especially in Keihanshin, I have always felt there is a sense of history wherever one looks. The skyline may have skyscrapers and delivery drones, but the foundations are laid on the bones of the dead. I think it is important to remember their sacrifices and joys and sorrows and glories. This is why I sometimes worry I am a sentimentalist at heart. What's the play about? A young man travels with the priest who raised him to Ikita Shrine to commune with the spirit of his father, Taira no Atsumari, that Atsumori. The young man's father died at the battle of Ichinotani when the son was only a baby, and he wishes to know who his father was. The pair stay the night in a small hut. In the night, the hermit in the hut explains he is the ghost of Atsumori. Atsumori has been granted a brief reprieve from his time in the afterlife to meet his son. During the night, they speak of the battle in which Atsumori was killed, the history of the Taira family, and their philosophy. Atsumori fades into darkness as he finishes the tale of the Taira's downfall, just as the family itself faded into obscure obscurity. So think we, yet oh that we might change this fragile dream of joy into the lasting love of waking life says Atsumori. Before fading is a tale of sorrow, love, and the burden of war upon the dead and living alike. The price one pays for war is not always in one's own blood alone, but in the shattering of one's own family. Uh, cool, cool story, bro. What about this box? 
The box is a deep, glossy black cube. The edges and corners are rounded rather than sharp, and the gold flake inlay across the surface glitters, even in the dim lighting of the room. Sliding the top off, the interior contents are revealed. A calligraphy set, complete with inkstone and block, brushes and paper. Ugh, that thing. It's a beautiful set, but it's a shame I am, I am unable to make use of it. Because you're blind? No, my handwriting has always been absolutely terrible. Whatever fanciful stories you may have heard of being able to tell a swordsman's ability by his handwriting, I assure you they are wrong. This set was a gift from a professor of Japanese literature. He appreciated my interest in the classics, the tale of Heike, the tale of Genji, and the collection of Ten Thousand Leaves, etc. I think he wished to encourage me to cultivate non-martial interests. I appreciated the gesture, but my attempts at fine calligraphy mostly resembled excited chickens prancing over paper, their feet soaked in ink. Interesting. Anything new with your reactor? Reactor? Oh yeah, what, are, what do you cast down here? Exactly what I said, a casting I made of a new locomotive assembly for Koshte. A biomimetic design, as you can see. This one is inspired by the walking legs of a decapod crustacean. The mangrove crab, to be specific. That's really cool. Yeah, does it make the drone better? Does it just look cool? That remains to be seen, but there's more to life than combat effectiveness, is there not? By fabricating new components for Coast J, I unlock options, different ways of being. Even the failures, and there have been many, have value in this context. Hey, you're really skilled, dude. Where'd you learn to do all this? Can you upgrade my drones? That's really what I want to know. More training and experience than I care to mention. Drone architecture was once my profession, you see. Now it's more of a calling, one that I'm free to pursue now that I've freed myself from the shackles of corporate servitude. Yeah, how do you make a living? Freelance. At the risk of sounding immodest, I've commodified myself rather well. There are always corporations in need of design consultations. You'd be surprised by how lucrative such work can be. And there's always other work I can turn to in a pinch. Yeah, where did you used to work? <sighs> That's something of a sore subject. My departure was involuntary, you see. I did not part ways with my employer under the best of terms. I will tell you I worked for Grecian Aviacor. If, if, Aviacor? But you'll forgive me if I don't want to go into detail. Yeah, what other kind of work do you do? A rather personal question, wouldn't you say? Maybe. Then we are having a personal conversation, are we not? <laughs> Indeed we are. But even in personal conversations, certain topics can be held off-limits. Truth be told, I don't feel especially comfortable discussing my side work with relative strangers. Suffice it is to say that my freelance activities often fall in the illicit side of the spectrum. And maybe we'll come back to it later. Hmm, perhaps. Now will there be anything else? Look, about your side work, you're a shadow runner, aren't you? <laughs> I dislike the term, but yes, I run the shadows. What gave me away? Design consultants live in apartments in Victoria Harbor. You're living in a rusted out boat in Hioi. It's gotta be a reason. You're correct, of course. The residents of shadow communities are usually either too poor or to live elsewhere, or engage in behaviors too illicit to risk it. I will admit to being in the latter camp. Designing robotics is my passion, but it doesn't always pay the bills. My status as a foreigner has proven something of an impediment in this regard. 
And so, sorry as I may be to say it, the lion's share of my income flows from Koshche's aptitude for butchery. Such is life, I suppose. We do what we must to do what we love. I want to work together. A compelling officer offer. I'm doing quite well on my own, but I must admit there are certain jobs for which I'm unsuited. Magic eludes me, and I'm not a decker. My strength comes from material objects in the real world. Solid things with mass and heft, things I can build and operate. Sadly, a great many clients are only interested in teams that display a mastery over the intangible. This group of yours, do you have people who can cover those bases? If so, perhaps we can help each other out. Yeah, we have shamans and deckers, they're both good at their jobs. Yeah, we also have a former security expert. In that case, I'll accept your offer on a provisional basis. We'll do a few runs together and we'll see how we get on. If our association bears fruit, it will continue. If not, I'll bid you my farewell and go back to working alone. How does that sound? Welcome aboard! Very good, excellent. When you receive a job, you know where to find me. My skills and resources are at your disposal. And with that, I'm afraid I must bid you good day. I still have work to do down here. This leg assembly won't clean itself. Sweet, so... We have way too many people to pick from now. That's not awesome, but... Now let's go talk to the shaman. I don't think we ever did go visit her again and talk about the dreams. Welcome back, here to buy or here to chat. Yeah, what about dreams, lady? As a matter of fact, I have had vivid dreams, the plague. But we all get the occasional vivid dream. Nothing special there. Why are you reading these books then? I already, I already went through a dialogue, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we already talked about her mom. Let's see. I'm thinking about the dreams. Why do you think they're affecting people outside the Walled City? Hmm, it's definitely strange. Until now, I always thought the dreams were nonsense, that my mother just had night terrors because of her madness. But now, it's really happening. And not just to me, to others around Hioi. Those same psychic forces that drove Mom insane are edging into our subconscious. Lately, I've been wondering if there might have been something to her ravings. Maybe. I've been skeptical for so long, it feels almost blasphemous to consider it. Maybe the walled city's curse is real. I just... don't know. Oh, jeez. Yeah, look through your mom's journals. That's true, but my mother's notes are scattered all over the shop. Most of her research is scrawled in the margins of the books that you see on the shelves and piles and stacks all over. The clues we'd need to figure this thing out could be in any one of these volumes, and there are thousands of them. I've got a bad feeling about this. <sighs> yeah, I know what I have to do. It's just... Damn. Look at them all. Guess I won't be finishing this one anytime soon. Alright, the plague. I'm going to get started. Now. But it'll take time. The House of Five Phases is jammed from floor to ceiling with books. 
and any one of them could hold valuable information. Check in once in a while, and I'll share my findings with you. I'll do what I can too. Thanks. Awesome. So she's doing research, maybe she'll drop us emails every once in a while. Yeah, Matthew, I think I have enough money for a drone. Matthew Cigarello is dead, drenched by rain. He stands with his signature nonchalance, but the uh, edges of his face are twitching? His eyes are wide with fear. Matthew's being chewed out by who? Let's hang back. Let's be, um... We did kind of creep on him a little bit earlier by look peering into his room and seeing all of his weird stuffed animals. So, let's, let's give him a little bit of space. We don't want to be too... Nosy. Matthew shakes himself off. His cheery demeanor surges back with striking resilience. He turns towards you, a little wide, wild-eyed, but otherwise restored to his usual self. Hey, the plague! I hardly saw you there. Come on in. Don't be a stranger, beautiful. Who were you talking to? I'm one of my suppliers, Kung Ha. Really good businessman, sharp guy. Sees opportunity where most of us only see broken parts. Funny guy, makes me laugh my ass off. What's your business arrangement? I sell on commission, gotta keep these bots moving. They don't earn their keep sitting out on the barge. Yeah, hey, wait, you don't own the drones? <laughs> of course not. How could I afford them? I'm so lucky to have a guy like Kung Ha as a partner. Only problem is he's got me laughing in stitches so much. It sometimes distracts me from sales. It didn't sound like anyone was laughing. And he sounded unhappy, even though I couldn't hear him. Oh, that's just Kung Ha. He's like a paper tiger. He's a big joker, always shouting. I think he's really a softy at heart. Real big heart for the little people. It keeps me well stocked. Whatever you say, dude. Anything for you, beautiful. You know what I love about Kung Ha? Talking with him is so invigorating. I feel like I could take on the world right now, baby. Look at the drones. Oh, heck yeah. So we can finally get these puppies. A shotgun. Oh, there's too many choices. Like, like in the previous game, I would have just been like, well, okay, we got the combat one, the steel links, we got the non-combat one, the sundowner, bing bang bong, that's it. Now it's like, well, which of these combat ones? The shotgun one or the rifle one? Which of these assistance ones? The one with um, medkits and grenades or one with medkits, smoke grenades, and a target designator? It's just too, too, too much to pick from. So let's see, we have our Doberman Mark II Assault, which I probably shouldn't have purchased, but that's fine. Oh, we have better armor to pick from now. Crap. Let's replace our basic bitch Doberman with, um... I just realized both of our Dobermans are, like, crappy ranking ones. We don't even have a that requires three. So I need to get these upgraded fast. 
Let's go for the Steel Links Mark II. Ah, oh, no, let's go for a Sundowner. I really like the grenade ones. They can move further, at least in the previous games. And having those uh, medkits is so helpful. And we'll save up for the uh, the cowl up here. I don't think just one more armor is worthwhile. Place that we can sell our original Doberman now. Spells. I don't want this spell. A mummy spirit talisman. Is that what that mummy gave us? I guess I should say that. Yeah. Let's talk to him again. Can we f no. We f oh, it's sell. Yeah, so. Oh, what? We're so close to being able to afford this cowl. That's frustrating. Because that, that would double our armor. That's totally worthwhile. Oh well. We'll get it for this next run. See ya, Matthew. <coughs> you, let's pick Raptor's stuff. Oh. Mangler or Predator? Clawed feet. So he can have like a melee drone. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll bring the, uh, ranged one. I mean, this looks really cool, but... Yeah, this sounds awesome, having, like, a little crab drone. Heck yeah. I don't want to take him with me everywhere just because he's a fellow rigger. I want to try out his drone too. <sighs> it is just too many people to choose from though. Like, I always want Gobbit because haste is fantastic. Uh, Isabel is super useful in case there's anything that needs decking. You know, even if the mission doesn't say it needs decking, like so much of the like pay oh there's pay data I need to sell. So much of that stuff is locked behind decking. Maybe I should um, try and invest in in a deck of my own when I can have three gear slots. Uh, so I want to like always take Goblin and Isabel, and that just leaves one slot left. So it's either I can take Duncan, who's like personally closer to me than the others, I guess. And I really like that we can like non uh, non lethally take down people with them. Uh, or we can take our awesome red samurai ghoul fellow. Or now we can take, like, this cool rigger dude with his crab drone. Po po post data. There we go. Sweet. Ah, uh, there's too much of this stuff. Like, I don't... 
I don't want to actually read all of this, but let's glance at it. Kuala Lumpur. This is Sunny Chung with Horizon News. On today's Sunny Side Up, the Kowloon Walled City, a blight on the free enterprise zone, or a low-cost housing for the economically disadvantaged. We'll introduce you to some of the hard-working residents, how they live, and how they contribute to the growth and prosperity of our city. Many residents of Hong Kong regard the walled city as a place of no return. To outsiders, it's the last stop on a long road to homelessness. Rumors abound of feral ghouls, unsafe living conditions, and triad extortion. Yet when we went there, the reality was far different. What we saw will shock you. Citizens of Hong Kong, working and living just like the rest of us. Their apartments are smaller and their shops more modest, but the people who live here wouldn't be out of place anywhere in the FEZ. Citizens like shoemaker Chow Sang Tzu. Oh, I love it here. We have a community, you know. We're like family. Maybe we don't have as nice a view as they do in Repulse Bay, but I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's not paradise, but it's my home. I grew up here. How could I possibly leave? Contrary to popular opinion, the walled city serves a vital function. The poor and downtrodden find a home in the walled city, a community where they have a voice, can work, and even prosper. Far from being the eyesore that... The video suddenly stutters, freezes, and ends. <laughs> Awesome. It's like eating old broth made from rat bones because there's nothing else. It's watching your neighbors sell their five-year-old son to organ leggers so they don't starve to death. When you die in the walled city, your neighbors cheer because they'll get the clothes off your back. Jeez. Um, top shelf sublet. It's literally the top shelf of a converted mains closet. Awesome. There's a ceiling hook for your gear. live in the walled city. <laughs> Looking for experienced Decker for a discreet milk run on a supply house for purveyors of recreational substances. Potential for a longer term arrangement. Must have a good sense of humor. Sorry, I just realized I was bouncing up and down the uh, camera, my whole desk, so I'll stop that, or at least try to. Erotic massage. Okay, I don't actually want to read through any of these. Like, it's interesting lore type stuff, and learning more about the setting, but, but it's not like relevant to the story at hand, so I'm just not interested, I don't know. I know that's lame, but. Also, it just seems like it's mostly there for like crappy jokes. So, so what up, Dunk? You're back, need something else? Um, you had a dream too, right? 
Yeah, yours sounded like a nasty one. I don't remember much about mine. I was pretty creeped out by our run into the walled city. Between that and all the drama, I'd be surprised if I didn't have a dream. Yeah, what do you remember? Uh, no, we totally already talked about this one. Jesus. Yeah, let's talk about being Shadowrunners. What's there to say? I worked my ass off to pull myself out of the gutter and to make some of my life. I did what it took to earn my bronze. And now I'm a mercenary, hiding in the shadows of a foreign country. Doing dirty jobs that the corpse need to keep off the books. It's the reverse of everything I ever wanted. You seem to be taken to it pretty damn well, so let me ask you something. You said you thought Raymond was alive too. That we'd run the shadows until we could figure out what happened to him. Is that true? Yeah. <sighs> Good. Good that we're on the same page. I feel better knowing that. What do you think about our last run? Oh man, you remember that Megatrid video we snuck into that one time? The one where the mummy took over Chicago? Yeah, I seem to remember you kept your eyes shut through most of it, you big baby. <laughs> That's the one. Completely freaked me out. I slept with the dumpster lid shut for a week. What a pleasure it was to go on a run that brought back such hideous memories. Still can't believe you made a deal with that thing. I mean, it was a mummy crab apple. You don't make deals with mummies. Fuck, I can't even believe I just said that. I didn't know Shadowrunners dealt with this crap. Can't say I'm a fan, Crab Apple. Not even a little bit. Anyway, enough about that. Need anything else? No, not really. Well, it doesn't look like I'm going anywhere. Let's talk to our pals up here. The Plague, you're back. Need something? We already talked about this stuff. I'd like to know you a bit better. <sighs> okay, I don't like small talk. Does that count? Oh, come on, you have to give me more than that. No, I don't. Look, it's nothing personal, but I'm not interested in talking about myself. I just don't think I'm a very interesting person. You don't like talking about much other than your computer, do you? I prefer not to. Nothing personal. It's just the way I am. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I just want to know more about who I'm running with. <sighs> yeah, you're still a mystery to me. I don't like mysteries, but I do enjoy solving them. Ooh, solve me, baby. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you a question, something personal. After you've given me an answer, you get to ask me something. Think of it like a game of questions. We take turns until one of us wants to quit. Deal? Sure. We'll start off easy. Tell me what you really think about Duncan. Jeez. Yeah, he can be a pain in the ass, but he's like a he's like a brother. Interesting. And a little familiar. Well you've answered my question. I guess that makes it your turn. How'd you meet Gobbit? We met as kids in the Wad City. My prison was her playground. Hmm. 
I don't actually want to make her uncomfortable. No, it isn't that. I'll be fine. I just have a hard time remembering those days. My childhood is kind of a blur. And that would make it my turn. So tell me, what is your connection to Raymond Black? He was like a father to me, me and Duncan. He got us out of the Barrens. In that case, I'm sorry for your loss. Losing ones you love is hard. It's your turn. Ask me a question. I'll give you an answer. How long have you been running, Shadows? It's a good question. I guess about four years now. A decent stretch by anyone's reckoning. That brings us back to my turn. You enjoy it, don't you? Living like this, working the shadows. I do actually, I think, enjoy this. I knew it. I could read it all over you. Your turn again. Go ahead, ask me something. I could ask where did you own deck, but we already know that in Wamp the Wampoan's daughter, right? The Wampoa. I lived there for a while after escaping the walled city. The people there were difficult. We didn't get along, but it was a great place to learn. My turn. I think my last question for you. You're stuck here, marooned. You and Duncan both. He's obviously unhappy with the situation. He keeps going on about the things he left behind. What about you? Is there anything that you want to get back to? Yeah, I think I'm enjoying this too much. Nothing? There's nothing about your old life that you'll miss? I don't know whether to envy you or feel sorry for you. Whoa, which is an antique analog clock. Shit, it's even later than I thought. I've still got a long way to go before the octopus is fixed. Yeah, you still owe me another question, lady. <sighs> it's true. Go on. Tell me what you can about the walled city. Why? Why do you think the hell's getting into our heads, influencing our dreams? No. I'm sorry, but no. Later, maybe, but not now. Alright, maybe next time. Please excuse me. I have work to do. Stuck to Gobbit. Welcome back, Seattle. What can I do for you? Like, why, why, why is it giving us these prompts that we've already done? I'm just going to go past them. How did we, did, didn't she just scoop off the streets? We already asked her this, didn't we? Yeah, we did. You seem pretty comfortable with all this. Been around the shadows for a while? A long time. Started when I was just a kid. Yeah, I gather you've seen a lot of action then. Plenty. Been more firefights than I can count. You're pretty new at this, you and Duncan both. It shows. What you need is a wise mentor. An experienced runner from whose experience you can benefit. I think I might be that as well. Or I, I think that might as well be me. Sure, why not? You're in? Good. 
Starting the next time you visit, I'm going to teach you all about being a Shadowrunner. You're going to benefit from my bountiful experience. Wait and see. I look forward to it. Yeah. You know, Seattle, this has been a nice chat and all, but it's getting late. I still have the rest of a hot pot to power through. So without wanting to get the awkward. Yeah, say no more. I don't know when to scram. Let's have another sleep. We'll do that urgent job because it says it's urgent. And then we'll go to the party. You wake with a start. Once again, you're tangled in your sheets, drenched in sweat. Your throat feels like it's on fire. What did we... Okay. You can't remember what your dream dreams were about. Not precisely, but again, you feel that yearning sensation. The emptiness in your gut and in your chest. Your head throbbing. You heave yourself out of the bed. So let's go uh, plant this Aries data. What sort of job that's not my code do we want to bring on that? So we're gonna steal a weapon and plant data. That sounds like corporate action, so it may well take our ghoul friend. Oh, I really want to uh, see Koshje in, in action though. I feel like we'll need Isabel. Maybe I won't take off it. We'll see. Yeah, we. Um, yeah, Aries facility. Oh, as you move to board the train, your PDA buzzes. It's Raptor. My friend, there's something I would like to discuss with you. Something related to the Aries run that you recently accepted. Go on. There are men, former colleagues of mine at that facility. I tracked them here from Russia. They are thieves. They stole my research. Tracking them is the reason why I moved to Hong Kong in the first place. At long last, I can recover what's mine and bring the villains who stole it to justice. But I'll need your help to do it. I want no need you to bring me along for this job. Sure. Well, sweet. I want to try them out anyways. There we go. We'll bring a Decker, a Rigger, and a Ghoul. A Ghoulish Samurai. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This drone is melee, so we are basically bringing two melee people, a Decker, and, and me. I'm our ranged person, I guess. This might be hard. Whatever, let's do it. Central Hong Kong spills out along Victoria Harbor, all glittering chrome and neon flash against the night's darkness. The skyscrapers are a jagged nest of mirrored knives thrust into the sky, rending the clouds as they ascend into the heavens. The area's Asia Holdings Complex squats menacingly over Chater? Chater Road? Sure, I thought it was Charter Road, but I don't know. A steel and concrete tumor intertwined with nearby buildings in a web of sky bridges and shared parking structures. You make your way inside and ascend to the fifth floor, a public foyer that connects to the restricted areas of the complex. As the elevator opens, you arrive in a cold, dimly lit reception area. Beyond it, your quarry awaits. Okay. Team. Got you. Do you want this grenade? It's yours, my friend. Yeah, 
hopefully we're good. Sorry, one sec. Wow, okay. Exiting the Ares Asia Holdings elevator on the fifth floor of the skyscraper complex, the antiseptic odor of the mega corporation's offices assails your nostrils. The immaculately detailed interior speaks volumes of the wealth and control the North American industrial giant has come to wield over the free enterprise zone. Ractor glances at his bracer, pulling up a page of notes on Ares Asia Holdings and scrolling through it. Oh, I can see Raptor. Raptor's a, a big boy? Jeez. We're looking for a lab between floor 15 and 40. Everything below 15 is shopping and recreation, and the residential areas span 40 not 41 to 92. The auto repair circuits should be up there as well. I know Taylor and Hardingham. They'll keep it close to their main lab so they can work on the project in their off hours, and they'll need specialized testing equipment. Things you can't fit in an apartment, even a big one. Sweet. Yes, once we plant the altered visitor record data, we can find the lab's precise location. From there, everything we need should be nearby. Okay. Let's save. I would have just auto saved, but manual save just to be sure. So, can we. What, what can we explore without talking to the front desk yet? Okay, so from bathroom I can send drones out. Why are we going behind the desk? Welcome to Ares Asia Holdings, a division of Ares Macro Technology. How may I assist you today? Oh, dear God, is that is that a ghoul with you? Yes, he is my bodyguard, and I would kindly ask you not to fret about it. Don't fret when you waltz in here with a goddamn cannibal in tow. Calm yourself. Not only is he my bodyguard, he is part of my research into the integration of drone hardware with living tissue. But that's... I am Dr. Ractor, formerly employed by Grecian Aviacorp. I was the director of drone development for over ten years, and the ghoul and drone you see are part of my latest project. You aren't on the guest list. It's a fully autonomous quadrupedal defense and attack drone with integrated fire direction data management, adaptive autosoft parsing, and modular weapons integration. This drone redefines Bleeding Edge. What's more, it has an adaptive experience registry subprogram, to which it learns. Oh, I, uh, yes, I see. That is a lot of interesting information. What should I put down on the arrival sheet, then? Put down, I'm here to make a sales pitch. If there's any company in this world with an interest in cutting-edge combat drones, it should be Ares Macro Technology. I have a full report on field and stress tests, part-time to failure, and combat eff efficacy. And I do not like being delayed. Very well. Have a pleasant evening, Doctor. Please stay on this floor until your escort from the Drone Research Division arrives. Oh, sweet. I'm glad Ractor's here to talk us out of that mess. Uh, I forgot that kind of uh, a ghoul stands out. <laughs> Activate a drone to send into the vent. Uh, Sundowner, I choose you. Get in there, buddy. Okay, activate more drones. Oh, I love it. I love how this thing walks. Power conduit. 
This power conduit is labeled elevator control and power. A series of tangled cables and wires weave in and out of the junction box as if it's been patched and repaired many times. A note is taped to the side of the box. For God's sake, don't touch anything in here without contacting me first. This box is the most temperamental piece of crap I've ever worked with. If anything gets unplugged, the elevator system will go down and take the security card readers with it. Why did we spend all that Nuyen on improving security if everything has to take the stairs? Let's do it. The drone tears out several of the elevator power and control cables, and a number of the diagnostic lights begin flashing red. It looks like you're going to be taking the stairs for the time being. I don't know if that's something I wanted to do, but... We don't need to be in combat still. Sundowner, come back to me. Why are we still in this combat mode? Whatever. Okay. <coughs> so we should stay on this floor, which we will as a matter of being forced to now. Oh no, okay. That's the stairs. What's this size? Yeah, so much to explore. Isabel, get in there. I really like these watcher eyes. That's a cool system. Okay. Okay, let's try and skedaddle. We did it. I still can't go over how much cooler this looks than the first game's Matrix. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. Get back in there. What sort of pattern are these guys moving? Let's see. Session is just back and forth here, right? <laughs> Elevator overrides. Oh, well, this is pointless. But whatever, we'll do it anyways. Tar blast. Yeah, it's tar blast. This. And then we kill this guy, or at least try to. Sweet. Oh, there's watchers in here too. Of course. Really?
Okay, let's move up. Ow. And do that suppression next turn. I need to heal myself, that's what I need to do. Should have read the help. What is this? I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, let me just look up how how to hack. Uh, why did I skip past the freaking? I guess we'll just learn as this happens. Wait, is it just what it says? God, we're horrible now. What? What the fuck is this? Okay, let's try it one more time, maybe. Oh, jeez, we have to do all of this again.
this one, right? Okay, we have that time, plenty of time to spare. Jeez. All for the stupid elevators that don't even work. Oh, security scheduling. Okay, you get up there. Run, 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 run. Okay. way um, more intense than anything in the other games, jeez. Okay, and I have to get out of here safely. It's oh. the easiest way to do that. two different routes that we haven't gone yet. Is there a good time to go through this middle area? Let's go for it. Yellow. Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, you can die. Okay, we can't use suppression again for another four rounds, so... I feel like we need to keep moving to stay behind these watch rice, though. Oh, damn it. It just saw me. Oh, no, no, no. I'm screwed. Okay. 
Caterpillar. Really? suppression awesome. and it's going to oh my god it almost saw us I did not think I'd be playing Simon Says in this. Oops. Oops. Is just pay data? Yeah, okay. Run, 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 run. Oh, this is actually fun. Whoa. This place is huge. So there's probably multiple things in this room. I'll get over this one first. Nom 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 nom. There's like not a great time to do this. Oh, that was close.
I don't know. I can't do this. So I don't actually need to do all of those Simon Sesses. I didn't realize that. Let's try again. switch for a gas system that's offline. Huh. Maybe there's something we'll have to come back to? This is all stuff we'll have to come back to, but I guess I might as well hack through these while I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, arms itchy. Um, okay. What else is here besides gas controls? Damn it. Well, that's one less of these little guys, so I guess that's still helpful. No, no. Freaking hell, really? No, why did I do that? Yeah, these are just all gas valves. I don't give a crap about that. Let's leave. We'll have to come do this later, I think. When we actually have a reason to. Damn it. Well, I could have just tracked out anywhere. Gas controls. Hello, lady, don't mind me. Browse information. The contents of the page consist primarily of marketing jargon, smiling corporate citizens, and a lot of information about the relatively recent incorporation of Ares Asia Holdings. Unfortunately, there's very little of value here unless you have an interest in stock photographs and corporate jingoism. Get in here, Isabel. You know, I'd expect Ares employees to be more careful with data security, but I guess nobody's perfect. 
From inside the machine's secure storage, you can access recent email and recent project updates. Read email. Most of the email's boring. Launch plans, updates on hardware requests, complaints about office lighting, and things of that nature. One thread catches your eye, though. I don't know why you're having such difficulty understanding our matrix upgrades, Trim. I've given you the bypass codes for the blocker ice at least three times already. Maybe you should write them down or something. Anyway, here they are again. These codes should allow you to bypass the blocker ice in a secure data store, and also for security scheduling. Don't sass me, Corporal. I wouldn't be in this situation if you hadn't been promising the Matrix upgrades would be complete next week for the past six months. After four months of waiting, I stopped thinking about it. Now every time I make a pull request from our depot, that damn ice gets in my persona's face and demands another set of passcodes. Thank you for the bypass codes, though. I'll write them on the back of my hand or something. Most of this employee's records involve construction projects in and around Hong Kong. One of the projects referred to as 2231 stands out. Dr. Chung, unconcerned about the amount of resources you've requested to pursue Project 2231, particularly because we are Ares Asia Holdings, not Ares America. 2231 is an Ares America project, not one of ours. What explanation can you offer for this request? How can it be justified? I understand your concerns, Director. You should be aware that all divisions of Ares Macro Technology have been ordered to support Project 2231 where possible. Dr. Taylor and Dr. Hardingham are particularly interested in testing their prototype in support of Project 2231. I am simply requesting enough manpower to find suitable subjects to test the prototype against. The risk involved in local research is unacceptable at this time. This is the entire reason the bulk of 2231-related research takes place at Complex 68G, and why 68G is in the middle of the frozen tundra. I would be willing to divert additional engineers for Taylor and Hardingham's project if they would be willing to create another prototype with the intent of shipping it to Complex 68G. I'll talk to them about it, Director. If you think it's not possible in any other way, I'll impress that upon them. Interesting. Okay, that's what we just read. Sure. What else could we do here? Okay, nothing. I'm going to save the game. I feel like we made a lot of progress in the Matrix, so... Save. Confirm. Are these elevators? Probably. They look like elevators. Yeah, but we broke them. How sad. Oh, this is a, a public terminal? This is a public matrix terminal for guests and visitors. Its primary functions appear to be directory and news services, as well as basic email. This is also a perfect terminal for you to upload the faked visitor records. Welcome to Ares Asia Holdings. Please note, all activity on public terminals is logged and recorded for security purposes. Please state your query. I search for Dr. Taylor. Taylor P. Ares Asia. Drone Automation Floor 27. Dr. Taylor has transferred to the Hong Kong offices of Ares Asia Holdings from his previous post in London with Ares Europe. Dr. Taylor's research focuses primarily on drone weapons technology, although previous work has centered on cryogenic technology and the impact of the Matrix on social structures and human development. Dr. Taylor is joint chair of the Ares Asia Drone Research Laboratories with Dr. Ian Hardingham. Current projects include expansion of the Hangzhou... Hangzhou, I don't know, Bay Tidal Power System, a proposal to expand the Hong Kong MTR maintenance program, and further research into machine learning. Dr. Hardingham has transferred to the Hong Kong offices of Ares Asia Holdings from his previous post in London with Ares Europe. He holds advanced degrees in weapons design, mechanical engineering, and holds several patents in the field of artificial intelligence research. Um, 
As joint chair of the Ares Asia Drone Research Laboratories, Dr. Hardingham's duties are primarily related to the research and development of new artificial intelligence solutions that will keep Ares macro technology competitive in this rapidly changing world. While the specific work of the Drone Research Laboratories is classified, previous efforts have been centered around self-repairing machinery, robotic game theory, and collective machine learning. You slip the data chip into a port on the public terminal and let the worm go to work. After several seconds, the chip flashes green. Now, Ares, Ares Asia Holdings, records show that Golden Fong has visited on several occasions in the past. So let's get to floor 27. We'll have to take these stairs because we broke the elevators like dummies. Hopefully I don't have to go back in the matrix and do any of that gas valve stuff. Oh. Excellent, the plague. We have arrived. We should make certain to find the auto repair prototype while we're here. What do we just search around? I don't see why not. They'll definitely have stored it somewhere near here. Okay, I'll find it. I'll find it for you, dude. Oh, game just saved. Definitely going to have some combat in here, I think. Okay, so there's several computers in here. There's this thing. Plant camera footage, plant financial data, gain access to main lab, retrieve the auto repair unit. Jeez, so much. So let's explore. Okay, this must be a combat room because glowing particles. Open door. Let's not do that yet. Let's go in here and look at this Dr. Taylor's office. Oh, fuck. Two, two, three, one. Oh no, it needs five digits. There's a small keycard slot on the side of the safe. A red light glows softly next to it, indicating the safe is still locked. Search for auto repair project. All information contained herein is considered secret slash Orcon. What's Orcon? Duplication of files forbidden. Authorized eyes only. Desert Wars field testing. Ares Europe's given us the go-ahead on entering the Griffin drone prototypes into this season of Desert Wars. Between the auto repair circuitry, the MP laser prototypes, and the self-organizing threat assessment programs, I think we've got a great chance at being one of the standout stars this season. Obviously, we have a lot of work to do between now and the kickoff event, so I'm expecting plenty of crunch time. I know each and every one of you wants this as much as I do. It's hard for me to express how proud I am of this team and all the work you've put in over the past year. If we can pull this off, we're positioned to be one of the biggest teams in security drone hardware in the past 10 years. If we buckle down and put in the hours required, I know we can do it. Glenlivet, my office? Come get some. Glenlivet, my office. What the fuck does that mean? Glenlivet. I don't know, man. <laughs> Taylor, how far are you fallen? When we worked together, he'd never written this kind of limp corporate missive. We all cared enough about our work that we never had to motivate the team like this. He's become a management tool of Ares Macrotech. I doubt there's much left of the passionate young researcher I knew. Uh, you sound a little bit sad about that. 
I am. The Dr. Taylor I knew was ready to work out of a basement, a garage, even an ice cave when we got snowed in outside of Novosibirsk during field tests. This new one? He gave up everything that made his independent work valuable. Tied down by inflexible budgets, deadlines, and the arbitrary constraints of a bloated marketing department. Of course I'm sad. His attention is confined by meaningless process, and the world is poorer for it. Hey, Ian, I've been countering a worrying bug in the latest multi-drone mesh network tests. After checking on it, I'm pretty sure it originates in the self-organization subroutines. When the Griffin drones go into self-diagnostic mode and start sharing their telemetry data after field activity, they stop responding to external commands. Even kicking the debugger over to admin mode won't stop them. It looks like they're not responding to outside commands because they're identifying activity orders as non-critical in comparison to their attempts to share and learn from each other's telemetry. It's downright spooky. They tried to push me out of the room during one of the tests because one started firing the on chair cleanup base camp function, and the rest picked up on it. They identified me as an object to be removed from their secure space, and the worst part is that the trigger condition was me trying to shut down the mesh network. I don't know, Ian. I don't like the sound of the idea of drones making value judgments about administrator orders. I'd like to strip out the self-organization code for future tests until I can debug it. I understand you're trying to play catch-up with Renraku on the pseudo-intelligence front, but the fallout if this bug spreads could be pretty catastrophic. Wait on the next test. Uh, just a heads up for the team. Hold on for further self-organization tests until you get the all clear from me, Taylor, or Jan. There's a bug where the drone network refuses external orders while they're pursuing their self-generated directives. Data sharing, learning, battle examination, etc. It's nothing critical, but it's going to make debugging other systems a pain in the ass until we get it sorted out. General tests are still a go. <sighs> Ten to one, they're still using my old code. This sounds like the same kind of bug I encountered during my early tests in Moscow. The problem is that they're trying to give orders to the drones while the drones have prioritized their own desires over that of the end user. They'll never respond as long as they're in group reflection mode. We're still working off your code? How long ago was that? Six years. I spent most of that in Berlin, running with a hell of a street samurai. I got out before she did, before the flux state went under. No idea if Lucky Strike got out or not, but I expect she did. Okay, we met Lucky Strike. Cool. I was never the best programmer of the team, but after my accident, I went back to my old self-organization code to revise it. The new perspective helped, honestly. The deeper I got into data sharing and self-development code, the more I came to realize that it was impossible to build a truly independent drone. A system as simple as waiting order priority. Checking from A to B to C is functional, but inelegant. My solution was to create a system of interlocking desires and motivations that shift and change over time. The only overriding principle is that both Koshche and I must work together to solve problems. Interesting. That's why it works as well. As you increase independence, so too is danger increased. If Koshche determined the best method of preserving my life was to shoot me in the leg, it would do so. And I would likely allow that to happen. Koshche's senses and analytical capabilities are superior to my own, at least in terms of battlefield threat assessment. Interesting. Search recent messages. Olympics cancelled? Can't stink and believe it, young. After spending all that time and money tracking down tickets to the 2060 Neo Tokyo Olympics, the OIC has cancelled them entirely. Some crap about not having enough participants. I guess a ton of countries pulled out in protests over Japan's treatment of metahumans and the way they've handled their holdings in California. I mean, yeah, I'm all for equality, but the Olympics? That's about brotherly love! the spirit of cooperation, and the unity of mankind. I can't imagine anyone using them for such transparently political purposes. It breaks my heart. 
Uh, Shia, I was hoping to take a look at your power output test data sometime soon. I'm going to be in and out of the office all day, so just let yourself in. Put them on my desk. The code's 98144. 98144. Oh. 98144. Hehehehe. <laughs> 98144. There's a barely audible click and the door unlocks. Your desk is mine now. Aries Asia Holdings wishes you a productive day. Uh, let's look at his project records. Redline, prototype directory active. Security briefing. Last week, Knight Errant officers responsible for the security of this facility received several reports of suspicious activity in the public area of the building. At thir at 1331, last Tuesday, security footage shows a troll, approximately 20 to 28 years of age, entering the public mezzanine areas of the building. The subject was seen attempting to gain access to restricted areas. The subject exited the facility before Knight Errant could intercept and question him. Reports from area citizenry indicates the subject was asking about research labs working on directed energy weapons. Several hours later, the subject was seen re-entering the building from a side entrance, wearing a custodial uniform. Night errant guards attempted to detain the subject, but during their arrest attempt, both guards were severely injured. Any employee or resident should contact security immediately if they see this troll. Do not attempt to detain him or interact with him in any way. The subject is considered highly dangerous. Dr. Taylor, it's come to our attention that you have not been treating this threat with the seriousness we believe it deserves. Please remember that the safety of your person and your research is not solely your concern. A strike against you is a strike against all of Ares' macro technology. When engaging in off-site entertainment from now on, we would request that you travel with a group. Thank you. Emitter Aperture Refinement I've had to change the emitter and focusing array in our latest MP4 Redline prototype. Prior to this, we were using the same emitter array as the MP Laser 3, since it's a proven design. Unfortunately, whoa. Unfortunately, that array is too large to continue using at this point, and there's legacy software that we need to update. The largest problem is that the outer lens is 3 millimeters too large for our new housing. In light of that, I've commissioned 20 new focusing arrays. They're being manufactured in Detroit, but should arrive next week at the latest. The fabrication technique is the same type that we acquired from Zeiss last year. It should give us superior beam coherence even in high dust and fog situations. I've been going back through the files from Ares Arms research on the original MP laser. A lot of the work was done by one Dr. Elliot Mills Fargo. Unfortunately, Mills Fargo is dead. From what I can gather, his son killed him during a drunken argument. What's curious is that most of the research files have been heavily redacted. It's all very curious. It's almost as if Ares Arms doesn't want anyone to know anything about the initial research. Very curious, given that we're all supposed to be working towards the same thing, aren't we? From what I can gather, Mills Fargo had a radically different design philosophy than Harding in it. Hardingham and I. Most of Mills Fargo's notes indicate he was primarily interested in purely vector soliton fiber lasers, rather than our own dye-doped matrix technology. From what I understand, that's also the basis for Winter System's own attempts at a man-portable laser solution. I can't find any evidence of how they would have developed that technology without access to Mills Fargo's work, though. I'm curious. Very curious. Email. You, Killjoy. Hartingham, I cannot believe you. Did you tattle on me tonight, Aaron? Saying I'd blown off the security brief and rather go drink alone? Psh, I'm a senior researcher, not a bloody prisoner. If I decide to go have a drink on my own, that's my business. Besides, Central and Admir Ad Admiral Admiralty are both crawling with the police at any hour. They're AAA secure, for God's sake. 
Listen, H, I really do hear what you're saying about security, and I promise I'm not taking it lightly. I was thinking we could go hit up the pawn after our meeting tomorrow. I've got eight or so takers from the lab, and Knight Errant promised to loan us a low-profile bodyguard to make sure nothing goes awry. How's that sound? They've changed your door code while you were out on vacation. The chips got a little fried when someone forgot to close the shutters in the new laser lab when they were testing one of the new emitters. It's 23847. 23847. <coughs> 23847. Let me grab that. 23847. And I'll just slap that in the corner of my screen somewhere. H, one of our researchers downstairs hit me up in a meeting about supporting something called Project 2231. It's headquartered in the Algonquin Manitou Council, some godforsaken black site called Complex 68G. I guess that has something to do with that debacle in Chicago, research into cleaning up the CEZ and whatnot. I thought it'd be nice if we could give them a hand, just lend them a prototype or the specs, let them test the laser out there. Interesting. Planting data. about this room? Dr. Hardenham's office. Okay, this is what we got that code for just now. Uh, 23847? Let me in! Project records. Power output. Preliminary reports aren't good. We can miniaturize the aperture and emission array from the MP Laser 3, and it's definitely possible to get down to a handheld size, but that's never been a problem. Energy density is the core concern. Our batteries just aren't up to snuff if we str shrink them down to pistol size. Without the MP Laser 3's battery pack, we'll be lucky if we even, if we ever find a way to break six or seven shots. It's a terrible problem, and all of the boys over in material science have been dragging their feet on. I've been checking into some of the new dual-phase batteries, but the cost seems prohibitive. I've made a note to Director Hui, asking if we could get some help from Ares Arms Europe. The, free, the Fire Lance research teams made a great deal of headway into using staged graphene capacitors. Maybe there's something we could learn from them. Attention, Ares Asia Holdings employees and residents. Last week, Knight Errant officers responsible for the security of this facility received several reports of, okay, we read that. We read that. That's cool. These appear to be Dr. Hardingham's notes on attaching the prototype to security drones. Things proceed apace, assuming a standard medium drone like the Inquisitor or Rover 9230 models. The drone provides sufficient power to enable the prototype to effectively unlimited bursts, though there's a 30 second charge time if the capacitors are drained rapidly. The small size of the emitter lens also means that the prototype can be mounted modularly or internally as the platform dictates. For smaller sized drones, the output is more restricted, but still valuable. Charge times increase to between 2 and 5 minutes, assuming standard battery power. This does unfortunately reduce the drone's, the drone's loiter time. Each shot reduces the loiter time by approximately 2.5 minutes, more than enough for a sustained engagement, but something we'll want to keep an eye on. I believe we can, we can increase efficiency in these cases by including a supercooling medium, liquid nitrogen or the like, to reduce the heat pump's draw from the power systems. Maybe something like we worked out for the Sentinel P series berths. Sweet. Um, just give me the freaking. Okay, so this Harding inside of this conversation is Taylor. I don't think you're taking the security breach seriously enough. A bloody troll tried to waltz into the building not just once, but twice. He beat up some of the bully boys downstairs, and he's definitely after our work. And you want to waltz off to the pub like nothing's happened. At least go in a group, man. Listen, I don't know how you managed to beat me in that last game, but I know you're cheating. All the data checks out but I can't believe your aim suddenly gotten so much better than mine. When I find out what hack you cooked up, you're going to owe me 50 million. 
Either that or your characters are all going to be wearing bright green lime costumes from now on. What sort of game are they playing? Very curious. Dr. Taylor, we appreciate your concern about the threat neutralization system leaking from your office air vent. Your safety and the safety of the lab are our topmost priorities. Until we can get maintenance to inspect the valve, valve you can access the security control for the vent 3 via the matrix. The, oh, yes, we have the blocker ice code. Let me grab that and put it into the corner of my screen. Uh, that way we don't have to do all that hacking. Should any further leaks occur, please contact us again. We will almost certainly start getting gassed and have to have Isabel go in there and shut off those uh, valves. Pop time. Okay, Taylor, if you've gotten eight people and a bodyguard together for a pint or two after we have our meeting, I'm game. Sorry about being so testy earlier. I just don't relish the idea of being beaten to a bloody pelt by some trog with an interest in my research. We didn't find any safe code. Sad news. So I have plant camera footage to get access to main lab. Uh, how the fuck do I crack open the safe? System service. Matrix track. What's the sound? Isabel, get in there. Oh, there's a different uh, server, okay. Or a different area of it, at least. Okay, this leads us directly to a gas valve. This is where we'll have to go for all, our, all of our gas valve tomfoolery. Let's open up these. Oh, can I not enter a password? Why isn't it giving me the option to enter a password? That counts as a failure. Fuck. Sure. We don't have many tries to get this, so. easy access to them at the very least. Please don't see me in here. Okay. Why can't I enter? Okay, try password. See you. 
Cortex. Freeze. Okay, now we have easy, easy access. So when we inevitably need to use it, we can. side. I'm going to save and then we'll go into this, uh, was, I presume, the main lab. Oh, is this like a vent where a drone can come in? stillness of there's laboratory is suddenly rent by the unmistakable sound of an explosion before it trembles beneath your feet and dust falls from the ceiling tiles as the echoes of the blast recede around you the distinctive smell of atomized concrete and scorched carpeting wafts through the vents seeing a lot of radio traffic whatever that blast was Ares wasn't expecting it I think we're about to run face first into another runner team the plague shit if it's not one thing it's another we never catch a damn break it's not as bad as all that. If they're setting off bombs, the night errant forces in the building will be more concerned with them than they are with us. Stay behind me. I will protect you. We still have a job to do, guys. Quite right, and I'm not in the mood to play testosterone-driven games with a bunch of street punks with something to prove. Okay, we need this shit. The maps in the next room are quite obviously shadow runners. Their gear is mismatched, they wear no uniforms, and the mixture of technical gear and heavy armor indicates they're prepared for anything. I don't fucking care, I need to pick this up. The other shadow runners huddle up, their voices are loud enough you can hear them, even through the glass door. They don't seem to have noticed you yet. Crossed on a clutch, that was nasty. Yarl, is that the last of them? Looks like it, Bull. My C-12 wrecked the stairwell, so we're safe from backup via that rap. Dizzy, how you doing? Remind me again why we went to the executive level before getting to the lab? I'm all for a brawl, but pulling four knight-errant adepts off of Opti isn't my idea of a party. You, sir, need to practice your martial arts. We had to go up here, Dizzy. Without the key cards to get in the lab, we're as good as dead. Bull could have hacked the door, but his deck got slagged if you threw that rigor on him and broke his concentration. Uh, okay, okay. We'll have plenty of blame to place later. Right now, we have to get the hell out of here, nab the prototype, clear out before they get more soldiers down to this level. We've got a job to do, people. Let's get cracking. Yeah, it looks like we've got some company. Son of a bitch. Guess you guys got here first. Tell you what, we'll come in there and we can talk this over. Um, would you mind letting us in? I'd rather not be trapped in here when the night errant backup arrives. What the hell do you need to get in here for? <sighs> Probably the same thing as you. That lab has a later laser prototype, yeah? That's what we're here for. It just looks like you got to it first. I think we can have this conversation inside. Between the blast and the dust, I can't smell or hear anyone else. That doesn't mean you don't have guards right behind you. How close on your heels were the night errant troops? <sighs> Given the shitstorm we set off by having the exact penthouses first, we probably have a few minutes. They'll be too busy trying to figure out what we're doing up there. Hargum and Taylor's apartments are pretty trash, so they'll have to figure out what we're really after before they can respond again. Yeah, why did you go to the exact penthouses? I'd gotten some intel that Hargum and Taylor would be out tonight, but they had a secure safe down here. We figured that would be where they kept the prototype, and the key would also work on the lab door. 
Huh. I guess so, guys. I know of Taylor and Hardingham. That key is almost certainly for their private safe, where they're keeping the auto repair circuitry. We need to let these runners in so I can get that key. Sure. Get me in here, guys. Oh no, I want to pick up that thing first. Damn it. Thanks a lot. We've been cut apart out there. Never let yourself get back in a corner, you know. Hey, you guys should have been more prepared, dudes. Somebody should have brought an assault cannon like he'd planned, but no. Getting through SeaTac security was too much trouble. Uh, don't sass me, Opti. If I'd gotten my way, I'd have brought a second deck, too. Goddamn Sparky Ice. Here, catch. This keycard's worthless to us now. Thanks. Wait a minute, I recognize you. You're the plague, right? Your name's all over the shadows of Hong Kong. From what I hear, you've been doing a lot of work for Kindly Chen. Well, damn. I didn't expect to run in such heavy hitters on our first run out here. How'd you get tangled up in all this? Oh, they're from Seattle too, geez. We flew in from Seattle for this job. We're planning a few more before we head home, but this isn't exactly the best start to our little vacation. Listen, I hate to bring down new the mood, but we need to get the hell out of here. Hey, what about the prototype, dude? <sighs> we can argue about that here. We can try and get out before we get killed. If it makes you feel better, you hang on to it until we get out of harm's way. That is an acceptable outcome for the moment, anyway. Listen, what's your way out? We were going to rappel over the Federated Boeing building next door. With all the racket, I think we should probably... We'd probably get shot off. Um, now come with us. We're going down to the collapsed MTR station. <laughs> I didn't even know that was here. Should have done better legwork before we got here. We'll follow. More guns couldn't hurt, right? You lead the way. We'll be right behind you. Fuck. Hissing sound. We have the gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do it. Okay, first, pick the shit up. What was it? Okay, that's the prototype. Isabel, you need to haul some major ass down to an access point. Uh, I'll do what I can. Come on, Reactor, you come down here too. Oh, too bad I have Gobbit to haste anyone. I would love to haste Isabel right now. Oh, I don't like that sound. Getcho, you scout ahead. Isabel, I need you getting as far as you can towards that access point, please. Who are you guys? Rigger. Yeah, let's just throw out both of our drones right now. They can probably cover more ground than I can anyways. Oh, maybe not. They're both actually really slow. Should have moved Tractor first and then activated his drone. Oh well. Hey, you guys better be like some good help. Ooh, I hate to say this, but maybe like if they very conveniently get killed by the Knight Errant, then I can not have to deal with giving them the laser prototype or anything later on and uh still feel morally good about not just murdering them hmm. um, ok 
I think if we take out this rigger, then his drone will go bye-bye. So. Isabella further. If they kill her <laughs> before she gets to the stupid thing, I'm gonna be so pissed. Why aren't they moving up further? Are they trying to stay close to my main character? Oh, please tell me that's not the case. Because my main character's staying all the way fucking back there. Jeez. Isabel, get down here, please. Face that. other stuff to do. Um, yeah, let's increase our defense. Heck yeah. Dump shock. Let's see if I can flush this dude. Melee systems, not firearms. Smack, kneecap, saw blade arm. Ooh, boy. Let's kneecap their captain. No, we're not. Let's saw blade him. These guys, come on. <sighs> okay, I need to deactivate one of my drones so I can move forward. This is so lame. They're gonna be more useful than my two drones, I think, so. Sorry, Isabel. Be in our kit. Oh, okay, so you buff drums. Okay, I'd be closer to the drone. I did not know that. Ractor, you're pretty fucking awesome. And then 
we turn off. These freaking dudes, really. So annoying. Why can't they just come out here and help? At least no one's following Isabel. Okay, you need to just get as far ahead as you can so that our friends will follow. Director, can you do this? Yes! Oh, that is awesome. Come here, my friend. <laughs> Little helpers. Oh, I missed. There we go. Isabel, get in there. Finally, these guys are going to move forward. How? My armor! How dare you. Okay. Do I have to do this in order? I don't even know. Maybe we will do them in order. No, we won't. Screw order. Nice. ourselves a ton of time. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. We made this so easy on ourselves. Okay, gas is shut down. Prepare to die. I love this drone. He is my friend. We have to get that safe. What else can you do to the drones? Increase accuracy. Repair them. Okay, that's super cool. I need one of these guns on my character. Let's get in here. They might kill us. Okay. Well, you can't run from a fight, can you? Got you. Let's go toe to toe with this mofo. Wow, that shuriken is awesome. Now if we take out this guy, that shuriken one of them back there. 
Isabel, heal heal thyself. damage. Holy shit. Really? They're going to destroy Ghost Jet. Fuck. Um, can you shoot him with your repair beam from here? Yes. Thank goodness. Got you. Take this guy out. Plague, move up here even though you're not supposed to be on the front lines, because otherwise our friends won't help. Swiping the keycard across the slot, the safe lets out a beep and the light flashes green. As the door swings open, the contents are revealed, a stack of chips and a plexiglass cube containing a tangle of drone parts. With a deft grab, you scoop up the goods. Sweet. All the objectives are done, we just have to escape. And we escape through here, okay. Well, let's hide out here for now. Killing hands. Okay, at the very least, we've given them more targets to shoot than just uh, Gaichu. Really, why are you picking on the drone? Gaichu, tear the sky apart. He's a red samurai. Shoot this guy. Awesome. Wait, what did she just do? Did she just walk next to him and then run away? Thank goodness we had Isabel heal herself. Oh my god. Okay, I'm just waiting here for you guys. I'm not leaving without you. Ghost Jag. Kill. Yes. Okay. I want to use my shuriken. Heck yeah! So it seems like both Gaichu and Coast Strike have ways of stunning people that would let Duncan pull off his subdue, which is quite nice. We could be like a fully not killing policeman team. Uh, not Aaron. I don't think has policemen. So I'm okay killing him. Okay. 
I didn't even realize that guy. I forgot about that guy. Ghost check, you did you did good. Return to me. That seems to be the last of the security forces. I can't hear anyone else on this floor. We should hurry. It won't be long before backup arrives. <sighs> What's the matter? You chip a tooth on one of them back there? For a monster, you seem awfully squeamish about this kind of thing. It's not squeamishness, it's caution. This is an Ares facility, and Knight Errant is one of the most com competent security forces in the world. Only a fool would wish to face them on their own terms. Even monsters like staying alive. Oh, I don't need this stupid code up anymore. Let's go. The elevator doors refuse to open. Crap. Three doors, three rounds. Okay, let's go here. Let's turn our stuff down here. Everybody try and just get near the elevator door. Yeah, you can be up ahead a little bit. Spell, you're injured, get back here. Oh, I haven't used any of our smart proximity mines. Next time. I should put like a prox mine up here or something. What are you doing all the way back here, dude? Oh no! Doberman. Is this ranged? Yes, okay. Looks like it's two actions to put down though. I mean the doors will open next round, there's no point. Really? You're just gonna sit there? Why? He's going to get himself killed. Um, crap. Okay, door is open. We need to work on getting out. Sundowner, is there any way you can get to this, this dude? No. Be a distraction then. So stupid. Let's try and get this guy out of here.
he just stays there trying to fight, that's really going to piss me off. What's this vent? Wait, where'd that vent go? Does that vent go into here? I didn't even see that last time. Okay, now now you can leave Koshe. Got you. Uh, I think you think that guy's on his own. Isabel, get out of here. Really, I can shoot from all the way over there? Wow, that's super effective. Okay, come on guys. Raptor, get out. Okay. I guess we'll try and keep helping them out. Pulling back. Nice. Wow, this Sundown Remark 2 is awesome. Some big damage. Okay, we saved this guy. He's not going to die. Then if I leave, do they just automatically leave with me? I sure hope so. The enforcer? The enforcer's more dangerous. Ugh. They're no match for my fists! Okay, I think we're done with this mission, and then I am going to uh, call it a day for now. We made a lot of progress. We did two separate missions. Well, we'll get our pay data and buy some armor and stuff first before I get off. Wow, good job, everyone. Fuck yeah. Let's get out of here. And we'll give we'll give these guys a prototype. I'm fine with that. I don't know what we do with that anyways. The pungent smells of musty stone, grease, and remnants of neurostun gas mix in your nostrils as you rappel down the elevator shaft. Whatever frustrated night errant security officers are in pursuit are too far away to be heard. All around you, there is only darkness and the occasional red-hued maintenance light. As you reach the bottom and pry open the heavy elevator doors, light comes flooding into the shaft. With any luck, you're only minutes away from the MTR station, and with it, freedom. Uh, so my guess is we are not only minutes away yet. Is there going to be a fight down here in this ruined MTR station? You exit the service elevator and step out into the dimly lit basement. You hear no sounds of alarms, nor shouting, but it's only a matter of time before Knight Errant catches up with you. 
The basement smells of mold and stale air. Faint vibrations run through the floors and walls every few moments, evidence of MTR trains passing nearby. That was closer than I would have liked. Woo! Chalk that up on things I don't want to do again. Get gassed while trying to escape from Knight Errant? Ah, uh, buck up, Dizzy. At least your fists and feet could hurt those bastards. I swear to God, I'm never running against theirs again unless I've got an assault cannon with me. The old six gun just won't cut it against Knight Errant. Just spring for some APDS rounds, man. You don't need to overcompensate that much. So what now? We just march through the basement into the central MTR station? Yeah, we should move fast. Before we head off into the unknown, what are we going to do about the prototype? You need it for your job, I need it for mine. You aren't the only one who needs it. We have a job to finish, just like you do. It's unfortunate we can't both get what we want. That's how life is some days. You suck it up and move on. That's true, we don't actually need the prototype. Yeah, maybe it works on out. I agree, I agree, man. They take the laser, we keep the GPS? Sure. Deal. Excellent. I'll make sure nobody hears about this deal. At least not on my end. So what, what now? Do you want us to leave, or can we stick with you until we get to the MTR station? Uh, it sounds like they want to stick with us, so... Yeah, come with us. My guess is there's like ghouls or something down here. Oh, this is like the area where we fought those mummies. <laughs> There won't be mummies here, I hope. Okay. Um, do we explore? Maybe. Okay, no, we just leave. Uh oh. A piercing howl cuts through the silence of the empty station. It's distant, but probably won't be for long. Better move and better move quick. Guard dogs, they're headed our way, undoubtedly tracking us by scent. We need to keep moving, or they'll be on us very quickly. Um, sure. Can we get in here? I don't know if this is where we're supposed to go, but. Sure. Oh no, a locker! Why do I have to do this? Take it. So that's a stash. Generator controls. Um, this control panel seems to connect to the backup generators powering the disused section of the old MTR station. The readouts indicate that the backup batteries have sufficient power to keep the lights on. But the remainder of the power is devoted to operating secondary doors. If you t could turn this off, you could prevent Night Air Force from getting in except from the way you came. Yeah, let's do it. Hell yeah. I don't know where we're supposed to go from here. Uh oh. Let's not go that way. I don't think there's a way around this group. I mean, we could try. Whoa, big turrets, big turrets. I wonder if these guys will have to come up and help, though.
Okay, let's get set up. Doberman, move here, please. Why can't I go on Overwatch? Why am I going on Overwatch? I can see them. I should have just attacked. So I think the Enforcer is the one that we want to take down first. Oh, he has grenades. Oh, I don't have enough action points. Um, I could open up by flinging a shuriken into these guys. That's always fun. Yeah. Miss. Okay, I don't think any of my guys are in that blast zone. friends here. We're trying to draw the enemy into this stupid proximity mine though. Nice. Wait, did one of them die? Oh no, that was the summon spirit. Okay. Kneecap. Oh. Okay. Can I just leave? Just leave. Oh yeah, our buddies will kill that dude anyways. Later. Thing those turrets are off. Hmm. 
Nice. We did it! Oh. Oh, it was just that big orc runner who tried to get in there. Why does everybody want a piece of this place? Yeah, what up, dude? Or troll, I mean, not orc. As you move through the MTR station, several figures move to interrupt your advance. The leader is obvious, a hulking brute of a troll. He cradles a heavy assault rifle in the crook of his cyber arm, and reeks of stale cigarettes and casual brutality. The name Steeltooth is stenciled across the flak, chest, the flak vest beneath his jacket. His eyes narrow as you approach. That's far enough for you, punk. My crew's had a long night, nerves a little raw, you know. And crunching somebody's face always brightens my mood. Let me speak in small words so you don't understand. Give us a prototype laser or we're gonna kill you so hard your ancestors feel it. Try it. <laughs> you could try. Platform 6 is already pained with what's left of another team who didn't surrender. Turns out they didn't have the prototype. Maybe you do. I believe we are more than capable of killing this troll and his allies, should the situation escalate. I would not be particularly concerned about their chances of survival. You really think so, zombie? Maybe you're right. Maybe not. Either way, you just signed up to be the first target. Right. Cigarette's done, which means your time's up. Hand over the prototype now. You must be that genius Ares caught breaking in. Twice in one night. What are you talking about? Don't be stupid. Okay, then. You came in the front door first, then you came back dressed as a janitor. Hey, shut up, okay? Just shut up. I was doing legwork, and the suits weren't telling me nothing. So I had to get in and root around a bit, you know? You want to keep your arms? You don't tell anybody about that. I'm not giving you a damn thing. Light them up. Yeah, come on. We're two teams against one. We can do this. And these guys have been really friendly. This noob team. I hope none of them die. So Steel Tooth needs to die. Sun Banner. Is there any chance you could make that happen? Uh, that's gonna be real sad when he dies in the very first turn of combat to my two drones. Yep. Bye bye, Steel Tooth. Thought you were some kind of hard ass. Ractor, let's show him what your drone can do. Also, give it a bit of a speed boost. What? These guys suck. They're not even competition. Uh, I kind of feel bad now. You don't even have to do anything, Isabel. This is hilarious. I actually thought these guys would be like a challenge. I feel like my one character could have soloed them all. The MTR train awaits. With it, the promise of safety and freedom from any more uns unforeseen complications. 
Thanks for all the help tonight. I don't know if I'd have been able to make it out out of there without you. The world's better off with people like you in it. Yeah, what'll you guys do now? The huge make a handoff, get paid, probably take a few more jobs out here. Got a lot of debts to pay off, you know? Nothing's free in this life. You keep safe out there, okay? We all gotta stick together. If we don't, we end up with bullets in our back. Cool, we've made some friends, we have some connections. It's all about networking, so. Confirm. Heck yeah. The MTR train pulls away from the station. You become lost in the crowd. Just another face traveling from Central toward Kowloon. Every second puts blessed distance between you and the hornet's nest of knight-errant soldiers you've left in your wake. With the data planted and the GPS module in your possession, it seems certain that Ares Asia will place the blame for your run at the doorstep of the Red Dragon Association. The loss of the prototype laser is unfortunate, but allies are often more valuable than gear, especially in the shadows. With any luck, they'll be able to pay you back soon enough. Yeah, I know. Let's go collect our pay and then go shopping. Oh, the plague here. Come to the Mahjong parlor at once, the plague. I have something I want to show you. Your crew is already here. Yeah, I'll be there right away. I'm gonna go there next time. I'm not gonna go there right now. Sorry, auntie. First, I gotta go collect some payment, then hopefully upgrade my other Doberman to a Strato, which will be rad. Oh, I can't. Uh, we'll do it next time. We'll do it next time. That sucks. I guess I have to go talk to Auntie first. We'll see if she wants um, next Saturday. Well, later, I'm gonna go get some lunch and I have to do some prep work for a, a Pathfinder campaign I'm running later. Not just one off, I'm running later on. So, so I've got a busy afternoon ahead of me. Later. Yes, lunch! Wonderful, majestic lunch. Mm. Yeah, thanks for hanging. Yeah, it is going to be a bit busy, but hopefully it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to running uh, the session later. Bye.